here we are at uh, Brian B. Kelly's studio in Willoughby in Warwickshire. The sun is shining and it's a beautiful day, so I'm hoping that he feels inspired to tell us a bit about his um, artistic history and his views of art for the future. So, uh, welcome, Brian. Thank you, Karen. It's nice to see you again, though. Well, we recently, well, in the last two years, we moved into this cottage and it had this lovely building um, outside. And I suddenly thought one day this would make a nice studio. And so, with, um, with the help of a good electrician and a couple of friends <laughs> and some hard work, here we are. <laughs> yeah. So, it's in the back garden of the cottage, so it's, it's quite useful. It's a discipline in itself, sort of. It's easy to go in and have a cup of coffee and forget to come back out. So it's easy to, uh, you just have to apply yourself. Yeah. So um, it happened just as the COVID-19 lockdown happened. So um, how has that affected your work? Well, of course, COVID-19 has affected everybody. And, um, and I just got my studio up and running and lockdown came in um, and of course that's changed everybody's life really. It's affected me as much as I'm here on my own and I can't just jump in a cup of coffee and rush off to Wellington or wherever to have a cup of coffee with some friends and, and discuss art and ideas and what's happening. And, uh, um, I've done one painting called Lockdown which is not here at the moment, it's at the framers at the moment actually, but I'm quite pleased with it. But outside of that, I tend to just carry on with my own, basically, or mostly, happy kind of paintings. Because um, I think people need cheering up now more than ever, including myself. But, so it hasn't affected the way I paint, or the pictures I paint, so much as, as I would have thought. That might come a little bit later, actually. But it was good timing for you. It was good timing in as much as... I couldn't get out anyway, so, so, <laughs> so I could just take, get a cup of coffee and come in here and start painting. It's one of the um, exhibitions that you were um, expecting to exhibit in uh, was cancelled, so that was another oh, yeah, disappointment. That was, in, that was in London, which is a pity. It was at the Barge ex House exhibit the Barge here. House, yeah, near the Oxo, Oxo Complex in, in London. And I think they had accepted three or four of my paintings. and. Um, the exhibition was about colour and the use of colour and colour, so that was just up my street. So they accepted, I think it was four of my paintings, but um, because of lockdown again, it had to be cancelled, which is a pity because it was an international art show with lots and lots of artists in there. So and, hopefully uh, that will reconvene. Well, yes, they, when they uh... said that as soon as they start again in 2021, um, they contact um, so, Brian, how did you get into art in the first place? Oh, Karen, that's a long story. I'll try and keep it short, love. Um, I come from the west of Ireland originally, although I spent most of my life over here. Really, and I got a longing to go back, and as I was getting on in years and whatnot, I have a brother and sister um, still alive in Ireland. And I, unfortunately, when I got there, um, I had been a potter over here as well. I, I taught myself ceramics some years ago and had a few studios and it was some success apparently. So I took my pottery equipment back to Ireland with me. But um, things were very expensive in Ireland at the time so I didn't have the facility or the money to, to open a proper pottery in Ireland. So I'd heard of, I heard of somebody who was opening up a pottery and um, I contacted them and they were very interested in, in all my equipment and whatnot. So I decided just to give them my equipment. Um, they wanted to pay me money for it, but um, that's not the way we work. Uh, my wife and I, if, if we're not using something, we tend to give it away rather than, than um, charge people for it. On the understanding, actually, that they do somebody else a favour or pass it on. Or whatever. I see. And that's exactly what I decided to do with with this chap and it was his wife and but he insisted I took something so he, he um, gave me a mon uh, an envelope quite a thick one with quite a bit of money in it and I, and I said no <laughs> and, uh, 
what I could have done with it at the time. But because I'd never had it, it didn't mean anything to me. So I said, I'll give it to charity. So um, he said, oh, that's good. I've got a daughter in Macaul, in the Himalayas, and she's only, um, um, God, what do you call it for children? Uh, uh, what, um, an orphanage? An or orphanage, yeah. yeah. A children's <laughs> orphanage up in the Himalayas. And they've got 22 children there they're looking after. So I said, well, that's where it's, the money's going there. And that went off to the Himalayas. And I got a lovely letter back thanking me. And they said that that money kept that orphanage open for 22 children for a full year, which is brilliant. Then I found myself with nothing to do. And my wife sat to nag me and say, oh, God, do something, do something. And so I said, I don't know what to do. So take up art. And that's how I got into art. So how you got into painting. Yeah. The funny thing was that um, I bought some oil paints because I was interested in oil as such, and um, oil paint as such. So I bought some oil paint and um, some small canvases, and I looked at um, through magazines or whatnot till I found something that I, that appealed to me. And um, I commandeered the bathroom, and off I went. And it was an amazing experience. It was a, a road to Damascus experience. That I, really? I had no idea that I could paint. No idea whatsoever. I used to look at paintings and think, how on earth, how on earth did you do that? And there I found myself doing it. I took my first 10 paintings into a lovely gallery in Wexford, a uh, small gallery, but the only gems in the, the top um, artists in the country. Uh, I took them in for framing. And the chap who owned the gallery, but long story short, said, amazing. You must have been doing this naive painting for years. So I said, yeah. <laughs> quite, a, quite a while. <laughs> Six months. <laughs> and uh, a couple of months later, I brought four more in, and he called me and said, Right, we want to offer you a sort of exhibition in London. So that was it. That's how I got into it. And uh, eventually, oh. I came back here and came. Um, so, how, how do you actually choose your subject, or do you have any artists that influence you? Or No, my favourite artist, artist is Van Gogh. Because I love his use of colour, his uh, naive type style and whatever. I like Paul Gauguin. Uh, most of the Impressionists, although I don't paint, but I like an Impressionist. Um, I, I just started to paint and it was naive style painting. And I was very happy doing that. And I still, I'm still happy doing it with my own interpretation of it. But um, they're my two favourite artists. So how do you start on your subject? What I start, um, I could be flicking through any kind of a magazine or a newspaper, anything. How did this one start that you're working on now? This one, because I've got a book somewhere, it's behind there somewhere, on Ireland, scenes from Ireland. And I'm flicking through it oh, last week sometime, and um, I saw this little picture of a place called Kinvara on the south bank of uh, Galway Bay. A few years ago when I was over there with my wife, we toured around because I love Connemara and North Clare where I come from. And um, we pulled up in this little village called Kinvara. Mm -hmm. And this, this this is a cafe. Doesn't look much like it yet. And hopefully I'll, I'll get it to look more like it. <laughs> it will do. But we went in there, there was an English couple, a guy with long hair and whatever, and we had a great chat. We had a lovely lunch in there, and the sea is just this is the sea wall. Yeah, right. This is going to be a boat, okay? But it's, it was just one of those little spots that was yeah. absolutely beautiful with the Atlantic Ocean. And um, it was just funny to see this little, it was only a little tiny picture. And I thought, ah, you know, yeah, I remember that little yeah. place. So that's how I got started. So that's how it starts. Yeah, yeah. And it won't be exactly the same, of course, because no. I don't do that. but. Um, it would be my... my um, the inspiration yeah, came yeah, from that inspiration, image yeah. and the this, memory. That one, you probably can't see it, but that one just came from my head, really. And it's, um, how do you see the future? The future? Um, the future is for art, presumably. Yeah, and um, for art and for you in general. Um, I think for artists in general, we're in for a really hard time. I've got some lovely pictures in a beautiful gallery down in the, in the Cotswolds, a wonderful gallery, Brown Century Gallery, uh, a very 
very proud to have had pictures in there. Um, and and they've had a hard time. And you know, we all know galleries were shut down at just the minute to reopen that. But people are so worried. I mean, they they're talking now about three million out of work in a couple of months' time. People just haven't got the money, or they haven't got the money to spend on luxury things like art, even though they still like to look at them. So I think it's going to be very difficult for us. I'm a trustee of the LSA anyway. That's Leamington Studio, Studio Artists. And we have a little gallery in, in, um, in the park there. Um, what's it, Gardens? Um, Jefferson Gardens. Jefferson Gardens, Gardens sorry. It's called East Lodge. East Lodge, yeah. And um, we've shut it down at the moment, but we're hoping to open that up now. On the 1st of January is our target, but um, it's, very, it's very difficult at the moment. So you had one of your works called The Fall yes. in the, the summer exhibition. Yes, that, that was that was probably the highlight um, of my career so far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> for, for what it's worth. I mean, I'm still going. But um, two years ago, I think it was 2018, I submitted a, a picture called The Fall, um, an oil painting on canvas. And uh, it was the year that Grayson Perry was a chief... Chief curator. Of washer, yeah. chief curator or whatever. Um, I like Grayson Perry. I don't know much about his art. He's a good potter. Um, but he's a great character. I, mean, I know he loves colour and whatnot. So. Um, I was delighted when they told me that he had selected the fall to, uh, to be exhibited in his now famous yellow room, which was fantastic. And he gave me an eye level position. I couldn't believe it. And then to, to top it all, somebody came in, a, a very nice lady solicitor from London, and bought it, which is yeah. you know, absolutely fantastic. But, but it was a great, for me, a great achievement. Yeah. Um, because um, I, never, I never took a lesson in my life. I don't want to take a lesson. I never uh, tried to copy any artist. And I never even watch any artist painting. And that way, whatever is in me has to come out in my paintings. I've got to find solutions to any problems I, I uh, come across. And that's what makes it interesting, because I never know what my painting is going to look like when it's finished. I'll start on one bit and carry on and carry on and carry on, and then try and get it all to, to come together, come and together. that's it. And it's as much a surprise to me as anybody else when it won't when it does come together, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, I wish artists well. I think it'd be an awful world without art, but it's going to be a while. It's yeah, going to be a while. It's going to be a while. Well, I just heard the ice cream van in the village, so That's perhaps a good we idea. should... Uh... Yeah, yeah, one with a chocolate thing in it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, it's been lovely talking to you, Brian. Thank you for letting us into your oh, new thank studio. Thank you for coming to and, see me, Karen. Uh, thank you very we much. We look sir. forward to seeing the end of this. Um, yes, yes, we put it on Facebook, shall we, or yes, something? Yes, we will. Yeah. yeah. Um, on my website, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's lovely talking to you. Actually, one of the things about painting your own is you never see anybody. So when somebody comes in, it's great. It's great. Great to, talk to have to a you. chat. Great to have a chat. Lovely. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much, Brian. Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much. Sir.